Hackers, crackers, and attackers, oh my. In this lesson, we're gonna start thinking like an attacker by starting to understand what are some of their different motivations. So hackers have a very unique definition that's evolved over time. Originally, hackers were just computer enthusiasts. It's people who enjoy computers and tried to learn how, what made them operate, and they would tinker with them and take them apart uh, and try to go through the operating system and understand it in depth. Now, over time, especially in the mid-80s and the late-80s, we started seeing a lot of computer hackers becoming a negative connotation. You'd see this pop up in, in movies and TV and newspapers. Uh, and because of that, there's actually a separate term that came out called an ethical hacker. And ethical hackers are people who are hired by a company that use the skills that they learn of hacking and taking apart a computer to do security and penetration testing for those networks. Because of that, the term crackers evolved, and that meant a criminal hacker, someone who was doing this hacking for a bad or malicious reason. This is the people you usually think of when you think about uh, a movie or, or a television show where you have this malicious actor breaking into computers and, and trying to steal all the information. So hackers in general wear one of three hats. They can be either white hats, black hats, or gray hats. So a white hat is your ethical hacker. He's breaking into computer systems with permission of the network owner, and the reason why they do that is just to increase the security of the network. Now on the other side, we have the black hats. The black hats are the malicious actors. They're the criminals. They're the ones who are breaking without permission. They're trying to steal your information, and they're trying to break your systems. Now, in the middle of that, we have what's called a gray hat. And a gray hat is sometimes good and sometimes bad. Um, it's, it's kind of a, a gray area, if you will. Uh, one of the things that you'll see with a gray hat, for instance, is somebody who does uh, bug bounties. They might be searching software to find the hidden vulnerabilities known as bugs. Now, if they turn those into the company, that would be a white hat action. If they used it for a malicious intent to steal information, that would be a black hat. Well, what would you say if they found that information and immediately posted it to the internet for everybody to know? Well, we would consider that a gray action because they didn't give the company time to fix the problem, and so now good guys and bad guys have access to the information at the same time. That becomes a gray action. It's not good, it's not bad, it's kind of somewhere in the middle. Sometimes they play nice, sometimes they don't. And this is a really difficult group of people to work with because sometimes they, they're really helpful and sometimes they're really not. So some other types of attackers that we want to mention here is uh, we're going to start with freakers. Now freakers are really focused on telephones and PBX systems. And the most famous of them was a gentleman known as Captain Crunch. Now the reason why he was known as Captain Crunch is because back in the 70s when you used to pay for long distance at a payphone, you'd put in a series of uh, coins and you'd hear a beep. And there would be a whistling sound essentially that would tell the telephone company that you've paid enough money to make that long distance call. Well. This gentleman found a whistle in the Captain Crunch cereal box that made the right frequency, which is 2600 hertz, and if he blew it, it would give you free long distance. So again, it's just learning that system uh, and being able to figure out what those security uh, bugs are. In this case, they're doing it for malicious reasons because they want to get free long distance. Uh, but that's what a freaker is. They, they're all about telephones and PBX systems. So two other types that we have here are software crackers and hackers and system crackers and hackers. So a software cracker and hacker is looking at how to disable registration keys and essentially get software for free. Uh, this was really popular with the old Microsoft Windows. Uh, people would pirate and steal the Microsoft Windows operating system, but it required that long 25 character uh, password to, to be able to use the software. And so they would find ways to break that registration system so they can get free access to the software. Now system hackers and crackers, they're all about figuring out what are the bugs in the operating system that they can exploit. So for instance, I might specialize in Windows hacking or Linux hacking or Cisco IOS hacking if I wanted to go after network routers and switches. Another type of attacker is what's called a suicide hacker. Now, these are people that know that they may get caught and they may go to jail for what they're doing, but they don't care and they're going to do it anyway. That's why we call them a suicide hacker. It's a lot like a suicide bomber in the terrorist world. The one at the bottom of the screen here is, is really important to understand, especially from a cybersecurity perspective, and that's your disgruntled employees and your insider threat. Now, why is that so important? Well, these people may not be technically savvy. They may just be your receptionist or your sales clerk. But if they have a beef with you, they can use their privilege, their authorized user access that they already have, their usernames and passwords, to get on your system and take information with them. Probably the most inf the most famous example of this is Edward Snowden with the NSA. Um, but there's tons of examples throughout history of insider threats where they steal your information and they either sell it for gain or put it out in the public uh, domain. Another type of attacker that we have is what we call script kiddies. Now, script kiddies think they're hackers, but really what they do is they download other people's tools. So they might go onto a website, download a tool, like for instance the Ion Cannon that was very popular with hacktivists for a while. And you would essentially just download this piece of software, plug in a website name, hit go, and it would start doing a denial of service attack. There was no skill involved, there was no coding of their own tools, it was just taking tools that were readily available. 
Now, a lot of the ethical hacker tools that are out there are freely available and open source. And so a lot of script keys will take those tools and use those as a way to hack into networks. Uh, but again, there, there's no level of skill in this. It's just very, very primitive. Uh, they grab the tool and they go. Now, the problem is there's a lot more of these tools available than there used to be. And so as these tools keep increasing in number, we start seeing a lot more script kitties in action. Another type of hacker we have is the cyber terrorists, cyber criminals, or hacktivists. Now, cyber terrorists and cyber criminals and hacktivists are a group that kind of get lumped in together a lot. So if you start thinking of uh, things like LulzSec and Anonymous, these are hacker groups, and some of them are very skilled and some of them are very unskilled. It depends on who is in this group. They're very loosely affiliated, and they all try to serve a common purpose. With hacktivism, you're doing it uh, as a political motivation. Uh, with cyber criminals, it's usually a money motivation. And with cyber terrorists, it's usually an, an ideological motivation. And finally, we have the good guys, the ethical hackers. These are folks who are hired by a firm to come in and test those networks. They have permission, they don't want to harm the networks, and anything they do is, is reversible. So anything that they do in their hacking and penetration testing, they then create a report and give that to the organization so that the organization can get better and do a better job of securing their networks.